This is Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society, an undergraduate course offered through the Department of Linguistics at the University of Illinois. Let's summarize this module in which we have examined the question, how does writing as a form of language technology represent language? So, we have now explored and learned how writing in various writing systems around the world represents language. Let's review. Some writing systems apply the phonographic principle, where symbols represent sounds. This is the case for most writing systems. Some writing systems use the logographic principle, where symbols represent morphemes. Much rarer are ideographic symbols, where symbols represent ideas. Very few writing systems use this, and those that do, do so relatively sparingly. Let's look at the types of writing systems. Let's begin with some mixed writing systems that apply more than one principle. So ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, the ancient Egyptian writing system, uses the phonographic principle. So many Egyptian hieroglyphs are phonographic symbols representing consonants or potentially groups of consonants. So some Egyptian hieroglyphs all represent one consonant, some represent two consonants, some represent three consonants. These form an abjad, a writing system that represents only consonants. Other Egyptian hieroglyphs have a logographic meaning in that they represent morphemes. A few Egyptian hieroglyphs are sometimes used in an ideographic way, directly representing ideas. Next, we have Chinese. So Chinese is often described incorrectly as an ideography or a semasiography, representing ideas directly. This is false. Chinese is primarily a logosyllabary, a system that uses both phonographic components and logographic components. So each Chinese symbol represents a morpheme that also happens to represent a syllable. Linear B is also a mixed system that has logographic and syllabic components. In Linear B, those components are more distinct than they are in Chinese, where some symbols are logographic while others are syllabic. The Japanese writing system is probably the most complex writing system used today. The Japanese writing system has multiple different subsystems. So the kanji symbols are derived from Chinese symbols and are primarily logographic in nature. The Japanese kana symbols are syllabic and form two distinct syllabaries. And a few symbols, a subset of the kanji, the kokuji, the so-called national symbols, are somewhat ideographic in nature in that they are formed through semantic compounding. But primarily, the Japanese system is logographic and syllabic. Now let's look at systems that are pure syllabaries. So systems where each symbol represents a syllable. So these are phonographic systems. Cherokee is an example of a syllabary, as is Yi. As our textbook described, Yi is notable in that 
the yi syllabary actually does have a single syllable, a single symbol for each syllable in the language, whereas Cherokee and most other syllabaries don't. Let's next look at abjads. Abjads are phonographic writing systems where each symbol represents a consonant. Phoenician is a prime example of an abjad. Aramaic is another abjad that developed from Phoenician. Arabic and Hebrew are modern abjads that developed from Aramaic. An alphabet is a phonographic writing system where symbols can represent consonants or vowels. Greek is an example of an alphabet and was probably the first alphabet where that developed separate vowel symbols distinct from consonant symbols. The Latin alphabet, of which we use a variant, was developed from the Greek alphabet. The Cyrillic alphabet, which is widespread in Russia and many other Asian countries, is also an alphabet that developed from the Greek alphabet. Korean is a distinct alphabet that was developed separately and is interesting and distinct in that it was developed to explicitly model the shapes of the mouth as the sounds were made, and the symbols are grouped together in syllabic blocks when written. An abugida is a phonographic writing system that couples consonants with vowels marked as diacritics. The Brahmic writing systems and the Ethiopic writing system are examples of abugidas. In a pure logography, the writing system only represents morphemes and does not also represent sounds. No writing system is a pure logography. In a semasiography, we have an ideographic writing system where each symbol directly represents an idea. There are no known pure semasiographies. Bliss symbolics is about as close as we get, but even bliss symbolics brought in some phonographic information. So, how does writing represent language? We've looked at a broad variety of languages and writing systems throughout history and from around the world. And we see that primarily, almost all writing systems primarily represent sounds. How does writing represent language? Primarily by representing sounds.